with our own Michael Buckley. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is sanctioned by the United States Boxing Association and, of course, the Nevada State Athletic Commission. USBA supervisor at ringside is Mr. Jim Stevenson. The three judges for this bout, Bill Graham, Dave Moretti, and Cindy Barton-Hunter. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Bally's Casino Resort here in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Top Frank Incorporated and Budweiser present 12 rounds for the USBA Super Flyweight Championship. The referee for this bout is Carlos Padilla. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the blue trunks with white letters and weighs an even 113 pounds, fighting out of Los Angeles, California. His professional record, 16 victories with six KOs against only four defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Jose Felix Josecito Montiel. And fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the turquoise trunks with black trim and weighing an even 114 pounds from Albuquerque, New Mexico. His professional record, 18 and 0, one draw, 11 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the undefeated USBA super flyweight champion, the baby face assassin, Johnny Tapia. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, guys, you were already given instructions in your respective dressing room. Any question? Okay, so guys, come up, fight it. Not a bad stare down, and there is Johnny Tapia. And there's no reason to think he's not taking this fight seriously. He's selling a little space here. Very little space, actually. He's a flyweight, you know? But imagine if George Foreman were to sell that space. That's right. It could say Chaplin's Restaurant and Tortilla Parlor of Guadalajara, Mexico. Bar and Grill. <laughs> Limited. Yes. These early rounds, I believe, in this match, very important, as I indicated in the keys. I just think that if Tapia gets off to the kind of start he has been getting off to in recent fights, it is going to be very difficult to, uh, for Montiel to come back. Montiel, as we mentioned, was once the champion of Mexico, and that's no small task, fighting no. the way of life down there. This is a good boxer. This is not some gimme for, for Tapia. And at 23, the same age as Tapia, he feels, uh, Montiel feels that he's the one that can get the world championship match if, uh, if he should uh, win this fight. Nice left hand by Tapia. Montiel suffered a knockout loss to Pedro Rebago in Los Mochis, Mexico in November of last year. Came back, has had one fight since then. That was a 10-round decision over Sergio Conejo, but Montiel's he has something to prove after that loss. Nice right hand by Montiel. Superb jab. One of the ways you beat a jabber is by out jabbing him. So I think Montiel wants to try and beat that jab. Right hand set up by a double jab. And I'll tell you what, I, I talked about it earlier, but you saw evidence of it there how much better the left hook is for Tapia. He really is getting such leverage on that punch now. He really desperately wants a piece of Michael Carbajal. Beat him as an amateur. Good right hand. Montiel off balance. Carbajal would have to step up a few pounds to, to meet him, but something that's something they could make into a very marketable bout. Hold it down on the southwest someplace. Carbajal from Phoenix and Tapia from Albuquerque. Maybe they'll meet in between. How about Flagstaff, Arizona? Taos. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> my my geography's not too good. I was mixing up Nigeria and Kenya earlier today. So. <laughs> that's right. And those are two countries. I know that. Montiel is not a bad jab either. Good left hand by Tapia. 
Tapia again behind the right. Lovely right hand lead came back to left hook. And another right hand by Tapia. Boy, is he sharp in the first round. So quick. This is what you do not want to have happening in the first round against Tapia. He builds on this. He feeds on it. Very impressive first round for Johnny Tapia. No contest. Tapia just getting much the best of Montiel. 17 to 5 that margin and the power punches is the operative word. He hit him with some big shots. Well, that's about as good a round as any corner could hope to have from their charge in the first round of the fight. Uh, Tappy did not get hit much at all and landed some very good shots. Here are the numbers in the first round. Montiel wow. threw only 30, landed 14. I'm Tappy. shocked at that. Yeah, I'm I too. I can't believe he landed 14 punches. That's amazing. Well, see, now this could be a first. I disagreed with you earlier, and now for the first time, probably, I, I don't even know, maybe in the history of us having it, I'm going to disagree with our punch profile. Biorhythms. Punch profile rhythm and my rhythm and your rhythm are just not in sync tonight. I think that's probably it. <laughs> Tapia was pushing on teal with that. Montiel got there. Montiel pretty quick with his hands also. He is, and we said he was a good ring technician, and you see evidence of that in these early rounds. I just think uh, this is not as fast as Tapia. Yeah, nor as strong, it doesn't appear. The height of Johnny Tapia has a problem for a lot of boxers at this weight. Yeah, in fact, when you just look at him, that is not a knockdown, I don't believe. No. When you just look at him, he doesn't look like a flyweight. Looks bigger. Yeah, and, and, and his upper body strength is getting better and better. He's made tremendous strides in the last year. He said to us today, he said, I am better. He said, I, I know I've improved in the last year. I don't think I was ready a year ago to really step up. And his manager trainer, Paul Chavez, who's by Tappy, who's a delightful man. Chavez really is. He, a very honest man, too. He said, you know, I'm telling you now, he's ready. Combination by Tapia, right hand lead and the left behind it. A little bit of redness over the bridge of the nose. Same combination, right hand lead, left behind it. You know, you look at that and you say, well, gosh, why well, can't Montiel get out of the way of that lead right? Because it's so fast. It is quick. Gets there so fast. Left hand by Tapia, and he turned that nicely, too. But we're learning something about Montiel. He's got a chin here, doesn't he? Yeah, a little glimpse into the future you're getting tonight. Eddie Cook, Johnny Tapia, and the like. We'll be back. Tapia with power and speed. Good right and right away with the left hand after. The crowd starts a chant of Johnny, Johnny, and the round starts the same way with a combination of Tapia. And we might add there are about 40 people that uh, made the trip. Nice right by Montiel. 40 people that made the trip up from Albuquerque with, uh, for Johnny Tapia to uh, root him on. Hey, contention here. Albuquerque, New Mexico, just a great sports town. Not only boxing, but just in general. Really great sport. minor league, uh, the Dodgers AAA team is yes. there. Yes, yes. Uh, college basketball and football. Very big, the pit. 19,000 people for almost there. I did a gymnastics event there several years ago and they had 19,000 people for that. Wow. On your card, I Tapia gave, the first two. Yeah, um, despite punch profile, I might add, uh, I gave Johnny Tapia both rounds. No, that's not true. Montiel showing a pretty healthy respect for Tappy in this round. He's on his bicycle. And, it, you know, it's not too safe out there, too, because the reach is good for Tapia. And he's quick there, and it's almost safer inside if you can get there. Oh, yeah, he's quick, and he's patient. And the other thing you got to like about him is he's got good people in his corner, and he knows it, and he listens. 
I guess if you wanted to criticize something about Tapia, it would be you were looking at him and you were trying to going to box him or whatever, that he's somewhat one-dimensional. He's basically a, he's going to hit you with the jab, the straight right hand, or the left hook, and, and he's, he's going to do it from a, a, an outside stand-up boxing position, and if you can find a way to disrupt him, you're good. But how do you disrupt that? I mean, he's quick. Montiel saying, come on, hit me on the chin. Well, he's done that already. Okay, wait a The left hand by Montiel, but it has no effect at all. Oh! Step up! Watch your head, okay? Carlos Padilla tells him to watch his head. We mentioned that there was a little reddening over the bridge of the nose of Johnny Tapia, and I think that was caused from a little brush of heads. And uh, Tapia didn't like it. It's a misnomer to think that Tapia is not a tough guy in there. He is. Headed for the end of the third round, and Montiel doing what he can, but so far tonight, it just hasn't been enough. Round number four, and the first three assumedly have been owned by Johnny Tapia. It's an eavesdrop into the corner of Johnny Tapia. We said it was a very effective corner, and here's what they said. The punches, but you're getting far away. You're too far away when you're throwing it, okay? Just, just, just get it a little bit closer. And go to your right every time. Every time you go to your right, he's wide open, okay? Go to your right. And get a little bit closer. You're throwing punches from too far away. So now we'll see if Johnny Tapia can heed the advice of Paul Chavez. Through the first three rounds, here are the numbers in the fight. Tapia, not as big an edge as you would imagine. You know, obviously more punches, and some of that is because some of my first punches are kind of more pity pat and uh, getting in there, even though uh, they're not uh, really too strong. Tapia got that with the right hand a moment ago. Montiel's in one of those situations where he knows he can't get into a brawl with Tapia because Tapia is stronger, but the same time he knows he's not going to win the fight by running. The jab of Montiel, though, becoming a very effective weapon, and that's part of the reason why those numbers are not that far apart. No holding, okay. Carlos Padilla tells Montiel no holding. One thing that uh, Jose has done in the last round or two is made Tapia miss a lot with the jab and started to get his own in. And he's starting to box a little bit more at the tempo that he wants and control the tempo, which is something I mentioned he might try and do against Tapia. And he's not letting Tapia get, get off in combination either, holding Tapia to one punch and out. There's a right hand by Tapia. This is for the USBA Super Flyweight Championship, 12 rounds. Tapia got Montiel turned around that time, hit him in the left hand. And the left hook is a, a, bout that, uh, or a punch that uh, Tapia has had him mothballs for a couple rounds here. And again, just a moment ago, a bit of a headbutt. Tapia made sure Carlos Padilla noticed. Uppercut by Montiel. Johnny Tapia is quite a, a, a lawyer in there, a good right hand. He will talk to the referee and try and get an edge. You can see Tapia trying to work in a little closer, as Paul Chavez said, and you heard, between rounds. End of round number four, and we'll be back. Round number five. Scheduled for 12, Johnny Tapia, Jose Felix Montiel. Montiel living in Los Angeles, even though he's done all his fighting in Mexico. And here, Cardell, I don't think this is going to be a surprise. I gave Tapia the last round, and so, and it's true, he hasn't run all these rounds in a huge manner, but I thought the last one was pretty dominant. Take a look at the punch profile numbers in the fourth round, and 
Each man throwing about the same amount of punches, but Tapia, as he has been throughout the fight, more effective with his. Why do they still have it closer than I have in every round? Huh? <laughs> that happening? I don't understand that. I guess because they're counting every punch, and I'm not. Huh? Yeah, that might have something to do with it. <laughs> Tappy is corner between rounds. They told him, don't get out of control. Don't lose your temper. Stay to the game plan. Now, there was a beautiful combination. Jab right to the body and left hook after it. And I'll tell you what, you know what? Johnny Tappy has not gone to the body as well as he's capable of doing. Started to here in this round. And we have to give Montiel some of the credit for a lot of this because he is a very crafty fighter. Although he took a big left hand there, he has stayed out of harm's way pretty well. Yeah, that might have been the best shot of the fight, best single punch of the fight. The trouble is Jose is not mounting much of an offense. He really is. He's not landing much that is meaningful. The gloves by Montiel. Good defense by Montiel, and that's an indication, as I said, what a well-skilled boxer he is. But it seems that Tapia is getting into range a little bit more. Starting to throw the combinations a little more. Unlimbering the left hook. Important question. And there is Great body up. shot. And that body work by Tapia could make a big difference in terms of uh, bringing the hands down of Montiel. shot again working the body much better in this round Johnny Tappy it's almost this as if he reminded himself hey I have a great double left hook I think I'm gonna use it in this bout and he started to <laughs> so the end of round number Five. And we'll remind you, baseball coming your way. A double dip tomorrow night, beginning at 7.30. It'll be the Red Sox and the Tigers to kick things off. Then the Reds and the Giants, the first and second team in the Western Division of the National League. Well, Giants, three, four, and five spots. Will Clark, Matt Williams, and Kevin Mitchell, pretty tough. Six, seven, eight, nine, and nine, however, a <laughs> bit of a problem. It's like having an even set of teeth, right? One, three, five, seven, and this nine are missing, true. right? They better start winning the Giants if they have any hope of uh, be, uh, catching the Reds. Reds just going awfully well right now. In fact, they've been going awfully well since opening day. 7.30 will get underway. Two games. Johnny Tapia throwing combinations. Just, never just one punch. Very good example. And now here, works to the body and comes with the left hook immediately. Round number six. Johnny Tapia, Jose Felix Montiel. For the USBA Super Flyweight Championship. Interestingly enough, Tapia at the weigh-in this morning weighed himself with his clothes on and still made super flyweight. Okay. He's right where he wants to be in that weight category. And uh, we talk about champions, uh, Sat Chitalata, the best known of the champions from Thailand, the WB. <laughs> All right, I can say he was known, you know, to everyone, but of the three is the best known. You'll, ooh, that's a slip. Yul Wu Lee, the WBA champ, and Dave McCauley, the IBF champ. So those are the people that, uh, in his division, that uh, Tappy will be looking at. Interesting that the Thai boxers and Japanese boxers and Koreans, to a certain extent, have dominated this division for a long time. Yeah, and between uh, he and Carbajal and uh, a few others, now Americans starting to make some inroads. And, and I'll tell you what, I, I will tell you, I, you know, Johnny Tapia could lose tonight. He could, who knows what could happen. But in general, you look at him and you look at a Michael Carbajal, and if they were to keep winning and win some title, it would be a huge bout down the road. Yeah, absolutely. Lighter weight divisions in general starting to really capture the fancy of the boxing public. Stop 
action. Three punch combination by Tapia there. Very solid right hands. That Montiel did not go down is a credit to him and his conditioning. Left to the body by Tapia. And a right hand off balance caught Montiel on the way in. Swelling around the left eye now of Montiel. The lead right hand really getting home now for Tapia. If anything, if there's a criticism of Tapia with his body work, he sometimes throws that left to the body from too far out and leaves himself in a vulnerable position to get hit with a counterpunch. That eye could get to be a problem for Montiel as this fight goes on. Tapia continues to work it. You know what, Jose Felix Montiel has good defense. His defense is solid. He's been hit with some shots, but, but he, is, he is doing a good job of covering up. There's a good example. Coming to the end of round number six, the fight schedule for 12. It has been pretty much owned so far by Johnny Tapia, but he's in against a pretty gay... Okay, okay. Keep that jab in here. Keep that jab. Go to your left, go to your right, jab, step back, and throw that right hand. Okay. 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 Here is uh, where Montiel, using his head a little bit, and the Johnny Tapia distressed about it. Feeling that uh, Montiel's trying to cause some damage there. I thought it was interesting that Carlos Padilla came into Johnny Tapia's corner and said, don't lose your temper, okay? Pretty tough sport not to lose your temper, isn't he? I guess, and why is it Carlos Padilla's business whether he loses his temper or not? <laughs> That's true. I just <laughs> didn't want anybody hitting anybody in there. I, I don't know. I mean, it's, isn't he a, isn't he a, a referee, a neutral party? <laughs> I'm not suggesting he's not neutral. I'd probably say the same thing to uh, Montiel. I just don't know why he'd say it to anybody. Again, there have been a number of clashes of heads, and this time it is Tapia who draws the warning from Padilla. Carlos Padilla talks to the fighters a lot during the fight. Yeah, that is his style, and he will, he will give them assorted directions and suggestions. Like, find a real job. Sometimes he will do that even when they're not doing it. No, get your degree. No, he doesn't do that. <laughs> good jabs by Montiel, and he doubles up with the jab, which he hadn't had a good uppercut. That's something Montiel has not done in this bout. He hasn't doubled up with the jab hardly at all. Do you think uh, officials in other sports, and you do a lot of college basketball, do they talk to the, the uh, participants as much? Okay. Not oh, here we have it again. Yeah, okay. again ahead, but again it was Tapia who really drew the warning. Uh, they, they'll talk to him before a game, but not during the course of a game, no. Unless things start to get out of control, and then what they'll usually do is call the captains over and say, cool it. Good right hand by Montiel. Very good shot by him. Excellent right hand. And this is a round in which Montiel has begun to use his jab and land punches behind it. And I'm almost sure that in Tapia's corner after this round, they will tell him to keep his mind on business, that he might be fighting a little bit out of control here. There's, there's Tapia. Oh, that was, uh, believe me, that was intentional. He said to Montiel, you want to dose your own medicine? Here, here's what my head feels like. Good right hand by Tapia. That slowed Montiel. See, in a way, you don't want your boxer boxing completely on emotion, but sometimes in Johnny Tapia's case, it actually enhances what he does. a very close round here. Let's go into the corner of Johnny Tapia and see what advice he gets. Did you think? Yeah. Huh? You're waiting. How come you're waiting? You're throwing all those combinations and then, then you back up. Don't 
back off and the guy after you get those come it's hard to get body. inside working on the body you're not working using the body working the body at all uh, okay sure. gotta get busy john no you gotta get busy i'll be busy keep on coming in with a hand well, well just play, uh, use that jab and don't let him come in with a hand too close john all right okay let's go We're too close we don't, yeah. don't want to come to that yeah Johnny Tapia complaining about the use of the head. Uh, in this case, yeah. Well, they both felt it, but I think that was maybe initiated more by Tapia. And there they go again. Wow. A lot of banging on the inside. And both those, I think, were initiated by either both men or just as much by Tapia. But I do agree with his viewpoint that Montiel has certainly used this head a lot here. Delaying getting the mouthpiece of Montiel in his mouth. Now we're set to go, round number eight. Oh. Oh. And all the people up here from Albuquerque, I have to say that some of them were astonished that I'm going to be in a team penning this okay. week in, in uh, Los Angeles, the uh, Ben Johnson Pro Celebrity uh, Rodeo. I'm going to be in team penning. It's uh, this weekend at the... LA Equestrian Center in Burbank. All kinds of cowboy stars, nobody there, so it should be a lot, a lot of fun. Nice combination by Tapia. And uh, hopefully more fun than what's going on here. These guys are getting whacked. And I mean, both men are throwing counter punches, or, I mean, good power shots. And the, through the first seven rounds, Tapia now starting to really draw clear of Montiel in terms of punches landed. And his effectiveness has been up high since the opening bell. And uh, I think in the last three or four rounds, it, uh, except maybe for that last one, he has really picked things up. Remember, this fight is for a championship of sorts, the USBA Super Flyweight Championship. That's the reason it's going 12 rounds. Montiel has fought for this title before and lost. And Johnny Tapia has won it, defended it, and now this will be his second defense. Out of the one minute mark, round number eight. Combination again by Tapia, left and right hand behind it. Doing well with the right hand lead is Tapia. Oh, and that has been a staple for him throughout this bout. But it doesn't stop Montiel. He just keeps coming through. There's a little swelling out of the left eye of Johnny Tapia. In fact, the swelling that was there with Montiel is no worse than it was. And Tapia's is probably a little worse than Montiel's right at the moment. Tapia's going to, when he looks in the mirror tomorrow, he's going to know he was in there with a guy who could hit a little bit. Oh, yeah, Montiel has landed some good shots. The interesting thing about this round is that that lead right hand has landed for Tapia, but Montiel is still there. End of the eighth round, and we'll be back. <laughs> Tapia has just landed countless right hands like this. And uh, that one, a good one for the last round. And he starts this round with a big right hand. Takes up the chant, Johnny. Your card after eight rounds, I have an idea. I know what's going to be on this. Shut up. It is, and you know there.